see most of the databases what happens is we have various tables we form various relations and then uh, let's just take an example see this let us say we have an employee table this is this contains all the information about the employees let us say this is the employee id this is the employee name and maybe this is the department id in which uh, you know this particular employee works for employee number one whose name is a works for department number one something like this and now what should be this department id we know that it has to be a foreign key referring to the department right now this department id will refer to the department id these two fields need not have the same name you know it is a good practice to avoid same names even though they have the same meaning and even though they are same it is better that you avoid the uh, you know same names because what happens is okay we shall see that later now uh, department name right now department number is one department name is let us say computer science okay now if you want to see what is the department in which employee number one works what is the name of the department such kind of queries are very often possible which means we have many uh, many relations or tables possible in our database and then uh, we might uh, we might be having a query someone will be interested in knowing the information which might require you know going through many tables for example what is the uh, what is the department name in which employee number one is working then you have to find out the department number in which employee number one is working and then you should go to that particular department number and then find out the name so this type of queries are possible so no then what happens is a kind of uh, joining these two tables will be done right a kind of it we shall discuss about it later anyway when we have hundreds of tables and if we have to you know continuously join the tables in order to answer many queries then what is uh, you know what is logical is why should we make these many tables at all the simplest database design will be putting everything together in one table what is the advantage no overhead of maintenance right you put them all together in just one table have a universal table let's call it as universal table which means i want to put everything that i have in my database in just one big table right everything either it is employee or department or uh, you know like this i'll have many many uh, columns all the attributes will be kept in these columns and everything is kept in one big table let me call it universal table now what is the problem with this or what is the advantage of this see information retrieval is easy now because you need not go through many tables painfully you can go to anything that you want and you can search for whatever they are asking for example if i have employee id here and then employee number and along with this if i even put department id and maybe department number right and if this department is also having some supervisor id right then i'll have supervisor id of the department also everything here then if i need what is the department for which employee number one is working then i can directly go to the department name and i can give this field isn't it without going through various tables it is simple and i need not break my head over how many entities are there how many relationships are there what is the uh, what are the attributes given the I extract all the attributes and put them all in one table and it is done you need not do anything else right but the problem with such a table is there are various problems here one simple problem is obvious redundancy right so redundancy is possible why redundancy because let us say in a department is having 100 employees right employee number 1 employee number 2 employee number 3 so on 100 employees right then i should continuously have the department id right let us say all of them are working for department number 1 whose uh, name is uh, you know computer science and the superintendent name is super uh, that supervisor name is let us say supervisor id is 10 right then i should have this information for every employee who is working for the department in case if you would have had these two tables then 
Keeping this information in a separate table requires this information to be present at only one place, right? This uh, ID will be, you know, uh, repeated here, but then the entire information will not be repeated. Therefore, redundancy is there. So, obviously, there is wastage of uh, space. Fine. Okay, anyway, let us say we have enough space and we want to go with this. But then, there are lots of problems that will get uh, arised whenever you try to you know insert something delete something or update something right they are called as anomalies so one is redundancy other problem with such a table is anomalies so what are there are three types of anomalies okay anomalies means uh, problems you can think of it that way so what are the problems is one is when you insert there will be some problems insert anomalies so how will an insertion create a problem here is assume that we want to insert um, a new employee with 101 who is also working for the same department and you are trying to you know insert it you have you have written the department id as one and the department name is supposed to be computer science but because of some mistake some error some typing error let us say you have written it as uh, you know ece okay Now let's say by mistake, I mean, you know, uh, because of some error, you have typed it as ECE. Then what happens is the same department now in the database will have two names, and this will this uh, insertion might go unchecked, which means you know database might accept it because it doesn't know where to check or how many tuples to check, and it doesn't know which one is right, right? So when you are having the same uh, same information at many many places there is a chance that it might get inconsistent at one point at one place it might show some information and at some other place it might show some other information right therefore insertion anomalies are possible right next one is deletion anomalies deletion anomalies means i'll just take an example here let us say i want to delete all the employees all the 100 employees working for department number one now no employee works for department number one then what happens is when you delete all the employees of department then the department itself gets deleted because there will be no entry which is containing the department number right so you know in case if you want to have that department even after deleting all the employees then you might have to have only the department uh, details and in the place of employee details in that tuple you should have all the null values and again you should keep track of whether i have deleted all the employees or is it the last employee or the first employee is added if the first employee is added then you have to modify this it is going to be a very headache i mean it is all a overhead in this on the software you have to you have to make lots of uh, you know checking and the software code itself will become um, you know hectic because uh, writing the code itself is going to be a pain because whenever you insert something delete something you might have to check the entire table which sometimes may span to gbs or terabytes right so deletion is also going to create some problems and then update update anomalies means whenever you try to let's say modification okay or update analysis uh, update anomalies so update anomalies means whenever you try to update uh, some entry that might create a problem for example let us say you wanted to change the name of department number one from computer science department you wanted to add something to the name of it let us say it is cs and it now the computer science department is now changed to computer science and information technology then what happens you have to search in the entire database and you have to see wherever computer science is written and you have to change every name it is going to be very very painful right in case if this information is just present in one table like this going there and changing it is very easy it is like that hash define isn't it in c programming language if you have a constant it is always better that you will define the constant using hash define at one place and you use that constant name wherever you want it later if you want to change it just change that hash define right similarly here instead of having this throughout the you know database just have it at one place that will be better isn't it okay so these are all the problems which will occur if you try to uh, you know reduce the overhead of designing the database by combining all the tables right so the solution is always simple divide the tables into 
as small tables as possible right then how many sm how small should it be ideally if you don't want any of these problems to occur if you don't want uh, any anomalies or if you don't want any problems the ideal size is two attributes which means make a table in which every table has two attributes if i if i have many such small tables what happens is in order to retrieve some information i might have to go through hundreds of tables in some cases therefore even though going for two attributes is always best sometimes we can get the same results i mean the best uh, best database designs even without uh, even with some bigger uh, you know at uh, some bigger tables you need not go till uh, you know small this small see going for attributes of uh, you know a table which is containing only two attributes is the best thing i'll tell you why later that is called as bcnf we shall see that later that is the best thing you could do but then be, because of this design the query time is going to be very very high uh, so what other solution we have is you know instead of going for so small tables use some loss use some formal methods in which you can get the same kind of good design even with a bigger table but not with so big table right so now the solution for all these problems is to divide all the tables not just this one even this table might also be having the same problems right do there might be somewhere some duplication problem or there might be somewhere you know anomalies we don't know that take every every uh, table and see if it is good test if it is good test if your design is good right if it is not good we are going to go for division or splitting the table right so that is called as normalization okay so we are going to split the tables divide the tables into small small tables which will contain less number of uh, you know attributes in such a way that your design will not contain all these problem right in order to do that that particular process which is called as normalization that procedure of dividing the tables is called as normalization in order to do this normalization we are going to use something called as functional dependencies fd in short functional dependencies right so we use functional dependencies and the concept of candidate keys so we you already know what is a candidate key isn't it so we use functional dependencies and candidate keys in order to evaluate formally formally means we have a well defined procedure right all this formally whether a design is good or not in case if it is not good using some uh, algorithms using uh, which are based on this uh, functional dependencies we are going to divide the tables right so once we know about the functional dependencies once we learn about it we can go for normalization okay fine if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and iits universities better than iits they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% but all the it is put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5% and if you are working hard to get into iit bombay iit bombay's ranking is 177 and iit roorkee's ranking is 400 if you are happy to get into iit roorkee then getting into universities better than iit roorkee is easier compared to getting into iit roorkee and looking at the salaries for computer science of uh, for software jobs If you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than. the salaries in india and these are all the services that we provide university shortlisting so depending on your profile we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building and then lor guidance and gre and english test assistance and education loan assistance so you don't have to have any collateral 
which which means without any security now you can get education loan getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee the amount of uh, fee that you have you have a range of uh, universities you can apply for 10 lakh universities 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities but whatever it is you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you getting it after you get a job and then we do visa assistance mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni so now you might ask why we should join game of visas so the answer is we have 90 percent success rate 99 percent success rate and these are all the destinations that we guide the students to so we guide students to any country that you want to go so now it is not just usa we guide to uk germany australia canada so we guide we guide students to all the countries we work with all the destinations and if you are interested in going abroad you have to just drop us a message on this whatsapp number 9494 555 454 okay thank you